Hello YouTube, this is Dr. Ronald W. Satz, founder and chair of the International Society of Unified Science and president of TransPower Corporation, a commercial and custom software manufacturing and certified systems engineering company. I work as a theoretical physicist and as a systems and mechanical engineer. Today's screencast, as with most, most of my screencasts, will be about the reciprocal system, specifically the reciprocal system microcosmos database. You can see on the left panel the main menu for the microcosmos database and on the right panel you can see the main menu for the macrocosmos database. I've already covered all the layouts in the macrocosmos database and I've covered many of the layouts already for the microcosmos database. Today we're going to turn our attention to material and cosmic subatomic particles. So I just click here and uh, we have the symbol up here. Uh, M means material, E means electron. So this is a material massless uncharged electron. The photon frequency is 2R, which means 2 times the Rydberg frequency. The rotational displacement is 1 hyphen 0 hyphen 1 in parentheses, which means uh, 1 magnetic rotational displacement, 0 secondary magnetic rotational displacement, and 1 uh, electric displacement in space. So an electron, an ordinary uncharged electron, is just a rotating unit of space, so to speak. The effective rotational displacements are 0, 0, and 1. So this uh, material electron, uh, the massless uncharged electron, moves outward uh, at the speed of light. It doesn't have any effective rotational displacements against the space-time progression. The effective rotational speed is one half hyphen one hyphen two, and then in terms of frequency, you know, translating this into this into this into this, we finally get r over pi hyphen two r over pi hyphen four r over pi. Okay. And by the way, the Rydberg frequency. Um, you can see here is 3.28806 times 10 to the 15th revolutions per second. So it's spinning very fast, obviously. Now the components of mass in terms of the number of units of all these num uh, values here. So I, I'm going to just go through this. This comes to nothing but motion. You can see the derivation there. Um, it's pages 157 to 171. And it's also covered in my work, Existence and Interactions of Computational Treatise of the Reciprocal System. So 1, <clears throat> E underscore U, is uh, the secondary mass of the electric rotational displacement for subatoms. Uh, 1, C underscore U, is the mass due to electric charge of electron and positron. 1, P sub U, is the primary rotational mass. By the way, U, as opposed to AMU, U is based on carbon uh, 12, whereas AMU, the, the older unit, was based on oxygen 16. Anyway, 1 M sub U is secondary mass of the magnetic rotational displacement. 1 capital E sub U is secondary mass of electric rotational displacement for intermediate particles. An intermediate particle has two rotational subsystems but only one contributes mass. And <clears throat> one capital C sub U is the mass due to the normal electric charge of the proton. Okay, <clears throat> so with these va the various values of the mass components we then can see what the material electron would be. It would be one E sub U that has a secondary mass of the electric rotational displacement, has zero C sub U, uh, <clears throat> there's no electric charge for the massless, chargeless electron. P sub u, the primary rotational mass, of course, is zero because um, there's really no effective rotational displacement. M sub u, secondary mass of the magnetic rotational displacement. Again, that's got to be uh, uh, zero. And the capital E sub u, secondary mass of electric rotational displacement for intermediate particles. And um, you know, that's zero as well. And the mass due to the normal electric charge of the proton, well, that's zero too. So, 
The calculated total mass here is this, but it's potential, not actual. So keep that in mind. It's potential only. All right? And that potential just comes from the one e, e sub u. All right? Let's, let's just look at uh, another particle here. Um, <clears throat> here we have m hyphen e minus. This is the material charged electron. This is the one with, we're most familiar with. This has mass. Uh, now these units are the same up here, the displacement, effective, effective rotational speed and rotational frequency, but some of these change here. This one in particular, this one, C sub U, mass of the electric charge, electron and positron. So here, this time this, this becomes actual, because if we combine secondary mass of the electric rotational displacement with the mass of the electric charge, electron, and positron. And this one's actually subtracted out. So then we get, you know, the final answer. Uh, 0 0.00548567. And then here's the uh, observed, which is you know, obviously very close. Okay, and then you can see the rest of these. Here's the cosmic electron, the cosmic electron with a, a, a plus charge. Here's the material positron, it's uncharged. The material positron with a plus charge. Uh, here's the C positron. This is the mass of uncharged positron from the cosmic sector. This is only a potential mass here. And you can go through the rest of these you know, cosmic positron. Here's the material neutrino. This is the mass of neutrino. The mass is purely potential. Uh, here's the cosmic neutrino, again, it's potential. Here's the material massless neutron. Uh, the cosmic massless neutron. Material uncharged uh, proton. Now this is actual. Ordinarily we observe protons, you know, with a positive charge, but you can see here this is actual. So this combines two E sub U with one P sub U and one M sub U to get this. And then to get the material charged proton, which is what we ordinarily observe, we have two B sub U, one P sub U, one M sub U, and one capital C sub U. And then here's the answer. Okay, and that's actual, obviously. Well, I'm not going to go through all of these. I'll just click through these material rotational base. By the way, this is the circular elliptical polarized light material rotational base right there. And this just has rotational displacements 1, 0, 0, so it gives it the speed of light. Uh, cosmic material rotational base. Let's see. And that about does it. That's it. All right. So <clears throat> keep in mind that uh, most subatoms are rotating photons. Some of the intermediate particles, like the uh, neutrons, are, um, I mean, the, the regular mass neutron, they have two rotations. So just keep that in mind. Let me just go back and uh, check on this for a second. Right here, like material hydrogen, isotope one is not really the first atom. It, uh, it's actually an, uh, an intermediate particle, and you can see the notation here. So that is a little bit different than what you're going to see for for most of the subatoms, because there are two rotating systems. All right. All right. Well, that's enough for today. <clears throat> There's your particle physics for you. It's uh. uh certainly much better than quantum mechanics. Okay, now, for the simplest possible treatment of the reciprocal system of theory, please obtain my work, The Unmysterious Universe, still in print after many decades, still getting good reviews on Amazon, has all the concepts, very little in the way of mathematics. It's intended as an introduction to the theory. But if you do want all the mathematics, 
then please obtain my magnum opus, Existence and Interactions, a Computational Treatise of the Reciprocal System, a True Theory of Everything. 711 pages in the PDF file, 711 slides in the PowerPoint file, thousands and thousands of equations, tables, figures, everything you could possibly want. It would take you months to go through this work. Then, when you're finished with that, you can consider getting these two database modules. The Cyclical System Macrocosmos database covers the universe as a whole. Galaxy clusters and groups, galaxies, star clusters, stars, planets, moons, minor bodies, nebulae, gas and dust, and voids. And you can jump right to pictures and videos if that's what you want to work at. It also has a nice graphing package. The Microcosmos database, today we covered material and cosmic subatomic particles. Um, <clears throat> in previous screencasts, I've covered solid matter properties, including interatomic distance, valence, specific heat, energy density, thermal expansion, compressibility, electrical and magnetic phenomena, isotopes, and atomic spectra. I've also covered liquid vapor gas matter properties, including volume and density, specific heat, energy and entropy, viscosity and surface tension, and electrical and thermal conductivity. And uh, this section here, this cosmic elements and subatomic particles includes cosmic elements, and what we covered today, material and cosmic subatomic particles, and next week we'll do photon properties. This also is a nice graphing package here included. Now, my theoretical physics mentor, Dewey B. Larson, was also a theoretical economist, and I made his work in economics also fully computational. That's my software program called Optimal Economist, an implementation of Larsonian econophysics. It covers the economics of individuals, businesses and business sectors, and also the macroeconomics of whole regions and countries. It completely supersedes Keynesian economics. It won't, uh, you know, you won't find this work in any other uh, book other than Larson's work. Totally supersedes all the other theories in economics, especially Keynesian economics. Uh, you know, there's, there are just so many things wrong with the conventional theories, both in physics and in economics. You need to rethink a lot of your positions and uh, study carefully what I've done here. I've made everything of Larson's work fully computational. All right, well, that wraps it up for today. Again, please study the reciprocal system and prove it for yourself. And thanks for your attention.